Okay, hi, we're here today with uh, Michelle uh, Pensabranco and Jodine Chase. Um, Michelle is a International Board Certified Lactation Consult and Public Health Advocate, and Jodine Chase is a Public Relations and Communications Consultant specializing in issues and crisis management um, uh, uh, news analysis. So welcome, uh, Michelle and Jodine. Uh, today we're actually going to be talking about uh, COVID-19. So um, I'm really glad that you're you're both here. Uh, I would like to simply start out by asking you each uh, a question, and we'll start with Michelle. Um, from the public health perspective, um, what do you feel has been the impact um, with pregnant and lactating families related to COVID-19? Thanks for having us here, Carol. Um, I think the impact to new families and pregnant families is still revealing itself. Um, I think it's also worth t keeping in mind that while this is unprecedented, it's not entirely unplanned for. Public health units um, have plans in place to address their programming uh, when unexpected events and disasters happen. New parents are a really important group uh, uh, that are targeted by public health because they're in a period of such significant change in their lives where lots of new health behaviors um, and social supports are needed in order to launch their, their new babies off and on the right foot. Public professionals right now are assessing what their programs are and adapting them uh, to serve the most urgent needs in a really rapid changing environment. So um, while some programs are, um, all programs are obviously critical, so we're not funding any public health programs that aren't very important, there are some programs that are that create a higher risk during a pandemic and also some programs that are of higher priority uh, during a pandemic. And that's particularly important around when we're talking about pregnant and young families, those families who are expecting a baby, so who really need information in order to make them more resilient through that early vulnerable period of their baby's life, as well as the parents who are in that vulnerable, that really early vulnerable period, especially around infant feeding and infant care. Um, and then we have uh, parts of the population who rely more heavily on public health services for their day-to-day -day supports. So those are, those are some of the things that public health uh, organizations are focused on, as well as preserving the health and well-being of their workforce so that they can continue to provide services through the pandemic and beyond. Sorry about that one. Um, so, Jodine, from a communications um, perspective, um, how do you see the impact with uh, pregnant and lactating families related to COVID-19? Um, so, um, as Michelle, uh, you know, just just laid out for us, we do have uh, some families that really are of higher priority in terms of the kinds of care and support that they need. Um, in general, and of course at this time. And so from a communications perspective, what I'm seeing is that although I think our health authorities and our um, uh, emergency authorities are doing an excellent job in getting good, solid guidance out to us around the changes that we all have to make in our day-to-day -day life, the messaging tends to be general. And when it's specific even to families, it is not um, targeting the vulnerable sector that we're seeing. So we're not necessarily seeing messaging directed specifically to someone who is um, in, in the later term of their pregnancy and is planning to uh, deliver. And we may not see specific messaging that is supporting families that are, you know, have just come home or have just birthed um, a newborn or uh, families that have, um, you know, a young child uh, and they perhaps a few weeks ago were uh, deciding to wean because they needed to go back to work, but now they're uh, not weaning. Or even families, you know, with babies that are quite young who should be exclusively breastfeeding, but for a variety of reasons they may be supplementing and they may be working on exclusivity, or they may be in crisis when it comes to infant feeding. So that specific messaging and that specific assistance is an area where I think there is a gap. And um, from a communications perspective, this is not new to us. We know that in emergencies, this is a, a, a slice of the population that is not always well served. Um, the concern, of course, is that the health of our families and infants right now is important. We need to keep families and babies healthy. And so we want to make sure that we are supporting our healthcare workers and people that generally are working to support these families to make sure that they have the information they need um, so that families can make decisions and take steps to uh, ensure that they're as healthy as they can be. Um, okay, so I have a question I'd like to ask both of you is, 
if you had an opportunity to talk to health professionals out there, um, what would be the and and parents? Um, what would be the key message? One key message you each would like to share. So um, I'll jump in on that one. It's a that's a challenge, Carol, because. Yep. This is really one of the things that I think causes uh, trouble for us is when we try to take, um, you know, a, an important message and deliver it. We may actually be targeting one group of people and we're missing others. So I have a, you know, have a specific key message for anyone who has just had a baby and who's currently breastfeeding, and that is to keep breastfeeding, even if you planned to wean, to continue to breastfeed until this crisis is over. Um, I may have a completely different key message that I think needs to be delivered to families who are uh, perhaps in a remote community. Maybe the baby is separated from the mother and there's a need for uh, full um, infant formula uh, supplementation. Uh, perhaps there's a worry or a concern that there won't be an adequate supply. Or maybe there's some information that this family is missing about how to safely prepare formula, and that's a different message. So I guess my key message is that we really need to be careful and we need to be specific in terms of who we're speaking to and what guidance we're giving to them and uh, to help them to understand and to make sure that we don't cause confusion or frustration. It's a, not a good idea to tell someone who's no longer breastfeeding that really what they should be doing is breastfeeding, and that's not helpful at any time, and that's certainly not helpful during this, this emergency. But at the same time, it's really important for people to hear that breastfeeding is going to keep their infants as healthy as possible and that uh, they and the people around them uh, need to be encouraged to support them to continue breastfeeding. Thanks, Judine. I'm sorry for putting, sorry for putting you on the spot. <laughs> Both of you. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, any thoughts uh, on your part, uh, Michelle? Well, I guess my message uh, or my one takeaway would be uh, to my colleagues in, on the maternal child health side, and one of them is um, those of you who have expertise in infant feeding to make sure that you're at the tables where decisions are being made about those messages because you really have something important to contribute. Um, so making sure that those tables where we're making decisions about priorities and about programming, that the people who understand infant feeding and the infant feeding picture in their community specifically uh, are at the table for those conversations. Um, and the other piece, I think, is when we talk about guidance and, and um, recommendations, I, we were talking about this earlier, Jodine and I, is that guidance and consensus guidance is really built at the global level. So from the WHO and UNICEF and, and those kinds of organizations. But the rollout of that guidance is implemented at the local level based on the local conditions. So I think that we need to be, um, in many ways, the, the folks who have infant feeding expertise are the, are the hinge between those two, those two pieces. So the global, the global consensus and the local capacity and circumstances. Um, and it requires us to be engaged and uh, at those tables to, to provide that. Um, thank you so th both of you so much. Um, uh, just to let those people who are also listening um, uh, to this uh, recording is that Michelle and uh, Jodine will be presenting um, also a, uh, um, a short uh, um, short presentation basically um, on infant feeding with considerations related to COVID-19 and we will have that available um, free, of, free of charge uh, out there for everybody to um, be able to um, view and share and our goal is that everyone stays safe um, and to to be aware of uh, good basic hygiene and be, cons be aware of those around you. So thank you both so much. We really greatly appreciate having the time to talk with you um, and uh, um, uh, we hope that eventually we'll get some time to have time, ha eventually we'll have time to actually share together. <laughs> so um, thanks again so much both of you.